Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 92. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 9. Hey, hypothesis testing. We've been talking about hypothesis testing and all of the functions. We saw a couple examples, but let's look at an example where we have to use the t distribution. Now over in our PowerPoints at the end of uh, handwritten notes, I have a bunch of examples. Here's one example. Uh, and the gist of it is, is the question is, can Neary conclude that the new machine is faster? This is for producing uh, lamp fuses. Are, uh, is there more than uh, 250 lamp fuses produced per hour? So they're producing these things. They have a new machine, and they want to run a sample. So you set up everything, the hypothesis. This is what the picture with the decision rule for the critical value is going to look like. Fail to reject, reject. That's the hurdle point. Really, it's the hurdle point for both p-value and critical value. Just with critical value, you're going to compare the test statistic. It looks like a t1.83. Um, Oh, that's the critical value or test statistic is way out here. Whereas with p-value, you're comparing the probability of whatever the test statistic is or less, and then the alpha. And then we have some conclusion. Let's go see how to do this in Excel. Now, the units are going to be amp fuses per hour. The assumed mu is 250. That's for the old machine. The new machine, we did a test, 256 uh, per hour. Uh, our sample standard deviation, so we're getting uh, both of these bits of data from the same sample, is 6. We want to set up our null and alternative. Now, just as we did in the last couple of videos, you just uh, type the mu and, and the information. And it's the operator between the two that matters. Now, you always, usually you can always start with the alternative. That's the easier one. And the question is, are there more than 250 produced per hour? So I come here, and I type greater than. Remember, the equal sign never goes with the alternative, always with the a null hypothesis. Now, once we get that, that's the hard work. We come up here, flip the operator, whether it's a less than, not equal, or greater than. In this case, it's less than. Mu is less than or equal to. Don't forget that equal. The equal sign always goes with the null. Now, we have a one tail. Our n for this sample was 10. Our level of significance is 0.05. There's our degrees of freedom, which we're going to need for the t. We don't need alpha divided by 2, but we do need our standard error, standard deviation of the distribution of sample mean. Equals, ah, but we don't have our population standard deviation. We have our sample standard deviation. Does that mean the calculation for standard error is any different than if we had the population mean? No way. We still use the square root of n, uh, and then on top of it, during division, we take our S, our sample standard deviation. What's different is that the distribution uh, that this standard deviation sits on. This is going to sit on a t distribution. So there's our standard deviation. Now we can calculate our uh, t. This is our critical value before we can state our decision rule. T inverse equals T inverse. The T is for the T distribution. The, e, the inverse is because we're calculating a Z for our critical value. Now remember, this function, as we talked about extensively in the last video, it's always thinking two tails. So when we have a one tail, we ha it already thinks we divide it in, in two. So we have to take that and multiply it by two, because it's by default a two tail. Uh, uh, it's interpreting everything as two tail. Degrees of freedom, oh, we have 10 minus uh, how many samples we have? There's a 9. Close parentheses. And our t, 1.83. That is our critical value. So we can state our decision rule. If our calculated test statistic is greater than 1.833, we reject h sub 0 and accept h sub 1. See how I, I flip back and forth between h a and h 1. Really, I prefer h 1. I just, uh, this textbook uses h a a lot. Um, OK. We reject h sub 1, otherwise we accept, or and accept h sub 1. Otherwise, we fail to reject h sub 0. That is our decision rule. So what do we do next? Our test statistic. Now we're going to say equals t 
equals, this is the sampling error, where is our uh, x bar minus the assumed population mu. That is our sampling error divided by the standard deviation. That's for the distribution of uh, sample means. That's going to give us our t uh, test statistic, our calculated test statistic, 3.16. That is huge. That is way past here. There's our conclusion if we're using the critical value because 3.16 is greater than 1.83. We reject h sub 0 and uh, accept h sub 1. It is more than reasonable. We should put it's extremely reasonable to assume that the new machine produces more than 250 amp fuses per hour. The evidence strongly suggests that the new machine is more productive. Now let's do our p value equals t for t distribution and uh, D dist for a probability. We're going to take our calculated test statistic. Now remember, this function doesn't ever like negatives here. We're up on the upper end, so that's OK. Comma, our degrees of freedom. We have a 9 over here somewhere. And we can just tell it how many tails we have with this one, and it'll spit out the right p value. 0 0.01. So when we compare 0 0.011 to our 0.5, it's much smaller. So we come to the same conclusion, but based on the fact that this p value is less than alpha. All right, when we come back, we'll have our last video for this uh, chapter. We'll do a proportion hypothesis test. All right, see you next video.